and welcome to Hara Gastro. In today's video, we will be covering a fairly common pathology and we will be talking about appendicitis, so let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of what appendicitis is, let's do a quick review on the appendix. The appendix is a blind-ended tube connected to the cecum from which it develops in the embryo. The cecum is a pouch-like structure of the colon located at the junction of the small and large intestines. The human appendix averages about 9 cm in length, but can range from 2 to 20 cm. The function of the appendix is unknown. One theory is that the appendix acts as a storehouse for good bacteria, rebooting the digestive system after diarrheal illnesses. Other experts believe that the appendix plays a role in the immune system, while others believe it is just a useless remnant from our evolutionary past. So if you look at my picture on the right, you can see the cecum here, which is that pouch-like structure that we were talking about. And this is the first part of the large intestine or the colon. And this is where the small intestine or the last part, which is the ileum of the small intestine, connects to the large colon. And right down here, you see this little bad boy, and that's the blind ended tube that we were talking about that is connected to the cecum. And this is the appendix. So the appendix is just basically a hollow tube-like structure that connects to the cecum. And as we mentioned in our little definition, the length of the appendix is about 9 cm but can range anywhere between 2 to 20 depending on the size of the patient. So now that we know what the appendix is, let's talk about what is appendicitis. Appendicitis is an inflammation of the appendix. Appendicitis is a medical emergency that almost always requires prompt surgery to remove the appendix. Left untreated, an inflamed appendix will eventually burst or perforate, spilling infectious materials into the abdominal cavity. This can lead to peritonitis, a serious inflammation of the abdominal cavity's lining, which is called the peritoneum, that can be fatal unless it is treated quickly with strong antibiotics. So if you look at my picture up here, we can see our normal appendix and then we can see the inflamed or infected appendix here. And as you can see, the walls of this normal appendix is not very thick. So when the appendix does become inflamed and infected, it will have a tendency to burst out because that wall is not very thick. So it's not going to be able to hold all the content that is collecting inside here. So I'll be able to explain it better in the next picture. So if we look at this big picture here on my left, you can see the abdominal organs in situ, which means the abdominal organs within the abdominal cavity as they sit. And right down here, we have the appendix. So again, if this appendix bursts or ruptures and all this content that is found within the appendix bursts into this whole cavity, this is a picture of the peritoneum. And this peritoneum is basically like a covering that covers all these abdominal organs and the peritoneum is sort of like a protection and it also keeps the abdominal organs in their place. It prevents them from moving around etc. But because it covers all of these organs, when this appendix bursts, all that content will spill into this peritoneal cavity and once it spills into this peritoneal cavity, it will cause a peritonitis. So keeping in mind that the peritoneum and this peritoneal cavity is normally completely sterile and bacteria free and once we have this digested food we have fecal matter uh, white blood cells whatever is found in this appendix that is inflamed and infected is going to spill now into this peritoneal cavity and in doing so this causes the development of the peritonitis so what are the causes of appendicitis appendicitis can occur when the appendix becomes blocked often by a stool, a foreign body, or cancer. Blockage may also occur from infection, since the appendix can swell in response to any infection in the body. So if you look at my picture on the left, you can see this little piece of stool, and this is called a fecalith. And because the appendix is a hollow tube, anything that obstructs the flow of content into and out of this tube is going to cause the appendix to become inflamed or infected. So the first thing it could be is a piece of stool, which is usually a hardened round piece of stool that causes some kind of blockage here. A foreign body could be anything from food, particles, 
or be anything that we've taken in or ingested or cancer and cancer could be a tumor that is developing maybe at this portion of the appendix and in doing so it's going to cause a blockage here because it's going to all be swollen and solid here and it's going to lead to the development of an appendicitis. So if you remember from our definition we said that the function of the appendix is not very well known but some experts believe that the appendix has an immune response function. So this is where the last bit comes in where if the if the appendix is really a lymphoid structure for example when we have local signs of infection we have those enlarged lymph nodes so if the appendix has this immune response function it's also going to swell just like our lymph nodes swell when they are in the region of an ongoing infection so if the appendix is swelling in response to an infection elsewhere in the body it could also cause an appendicitis in doing so so now let's talk about some symptoms of appendicitis the classic symptoms of appendicitis include a dull pain near the navel or the upper abdomen that becomes sharp as it moves to the lower right quadrant of the abdomen, a loss of appetite, nausea and or vomiting soon after the abdominal pain begins, abdominal swelling, a fever between 37 and 39 degrees Celsius and an inability to pass gas. So another thing to note is that the peak incidence of appendicitis is actually between the ages of 10 and 12. So just preteens and teens are usually the most commonly affected individuals. And the pain usually begins as a dull steady pain in the perimbilical, so around the navel area, and then progresses to the right side of the hip, so the right lower quadrant. The patient will also suffer low grade fever, nausea, and anorexia. And if the appendix ruptures, which means it bursts open and all that content spills into the peritoneal cavity, there will be a sense of sudden pain relief. So that is actually a very alarming sign when the pain suddenly disappears and the patient feels some pain relief, there's actually a much more problematic underlying action that's going on. And the last point down here is rebound pain or tenderness at McBurney's point. And I'll explain that in the next slide. So McBurney's point is the name given to the point over the right side of the abdomen that is one third of the distance from the anterior superior iliac spine to the umbilicus. So this is the anterior superior iliac spine and this is it on a patient. And one third of the way, which means from three to one, and two thirds away from the navel, so two to one, this way, this is called McBurney's point. So McBurney's point roughly corresponds to the most common location of the base of the appendix where it is attached to the cecum. So this point is roughly where the appendix attaches to the cecum. Deep tenderness at McBurney's point is known as McBurney's sign is a sign of acute appendicitis. So usually you are able to palpate this on the patient during a physical examination and rebound tenderness and deep pain at McBurney's point is usually suggestive towards a diagnosis of appendicitis. So now let's talk about how is appendicitis diagnosed. Symptoms of appendicitis are frequently vague or extremely similar to other ailments including gallbladder problems, bladder urinary tract infections, Crohn's disease, gastritis, intestinal infections and ovary problems. Therefore these pathologies must be ruled out first before the diagnosis of appendicitis can be made. The following tests are usually help to make the diagnosis of appendicitis. The abdominal exam to detect inflammation, especially over McBurney's point. Blood tests to see if the body is fighting an infection, and this can be seen as an increased white blood cell count. A CT scan or an ultrasound to check if the appendix is inflamed. A urine test to rule out a urinary tract infection and a rectal exam. And if you go down to this little box in blue here, I put in a note here. When it comes to the CT or the ultrasound, a more than six millimeter outer diameter, so these means the walls of the appendix, is usually a reliable measurement to characterize appendicitis in all imaging modalities. So if the wall of the appendix becomes inflamed over a value of six millimeters, this is usually a diagnostic characteristic of appendicitis.
So down here in my little ultrasound image, you see that it's actually 1.01 centimeters, and we said anything above six millimeters in diameter is a positive diagnosis for appendicitis. So this will be diagnosed as an acute appendicitis. And finally, how is appendicitis treated? Surgery to remove the appendix, which is called an appendectomy, is the standard treatment for almost all cases of appendicitis. Generally, if appendicitis is suspected, doctors tend to act on the side of safety and quickly remove the appendix to avoid its rupture. If the appendix has formed an abscess, one may have to do two procedures, one to drain the abscess of pus and fluid and later one to remove the appendix. Treatment with a course of antibiotics is also done. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on appendicitis. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video very informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.